style up on your own electrical business. Yeah, it can be challenging when you first start out, so you want to be able to give yourself the best start to get going as fast as possible. And there's a number of things that I wish I did from the start that would have helped my business grow a lot faster. But then saying that, there's also some things that were a complete waste of time that in my head thought, yeah, this will make my business grow, this will be fantastic. But ended up being a complete waste of time. So this is why I'm here today in this podcast where I'm going to tell you just what not to do when starting your own business and some great tips on what what to do at the beginning that will help your business grow as fast as possible. Hey there, once again, Ben Poulter, your host of Toolbox Talk for Electricians here. And having spoken to a, a few sparks in the group, the right steps to starting your own electrical business, they're not quite as straightforward as maybe you assumed at first. So today, I'm going to help you out by telling you just what I did to grow my electrical business that still to this day keeps that phone ringing all the time. So it starts out exciting. Like you're excited to start your own business. You're going to be your own boss. It is. It's that excitement. can It can make you do stupid decisions sometimes. Like when you first sort of name the business, you go out there, you think, yeah, I'm going to have a great name. I'm going to call myself Sparky or Electro or the UK Electrician. Yet yeah, all these names, they might sound fun, but you, you don't want to sound fun in the long run. You want to sound professional. And if you look out uh, over online, everywhere, sort of thing, just I don't know, yellow pages, if it depends on how old you are, whether you look at the yellow pages. But if you look at maybe on Google, the most successful electrical business I know personally are just simply their initials with electrical after it. Just as simple as that. I, in my opinion, the simpler, the better. You want people to remember your name and who you are. And your name is your brand, basically. My first business, it was called BRP Electrical. For the most complicated reason that my initials are Ben Roger Poulter. So I just called myself BRP Electrical. Everyone ripped me saying, oh, brook, brook, oh, brook. Yeah, brook electrical, they were calling it. But it's stuck in the mind, I can guarantee you that. So when starting out and you're thinking of giving yourself a name, take a little bit of time, but I would say that the best is your initial, like, there's AR electrical, BRP electrical. So stick into something nice and simple just with electrical in it. And the next step, once you've decided what your name's going to be, it doesn't even matter if you haven't done any jobs, just get yourself in front of many eyeballs as possible. And what's the best way to do that? Well, if you think of the last time that you had a job done, maybe you wanted your, your car fixed or your garden cleaning or maybe your house painted. 99% of people all over the world, they Google it. And with 8.5 billion searches every day, Google is undoubtedly one of the biggest platforms. And if you're not on Google, then where are you? You're not going to be anywhere. Like You've got to be recognized on Google. Everyone Googles it these days. And if your name doesn't come up somewhere, then you're missing out. It is the best place to get noticed where people will Google and find your name. And you can create a detailed account for absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a penny. And you can detail it so it'll only be shown up in the areas that you work in. So you don't have to be open to the whole wide world. You can just say, right, I work in Essex. That's the only area I'm going to work in. So you put on your profile that you only want to be shown to people in Essex. And a little tip, after you've created your, uh, your Google business account, get your customers to go on there and leave you a review. Google loves it when people interact with their platform because that's the whole thing of them being on there. Social media is sort of online. So to reward you with the interaction, they reward you with putting you at the top of the Google search. So the more customers sort of reviews you get on your page, even the better for you. And what I have heard of as well with people doing is just getting their friends and family to go on there and leave a review. They've known you over time. They can give you an honest review so they can go on there and say exactly what you're like as an electrician. Trust me when I say that this can be powerful over time to generate some leads and some customers into your business. And at the start of building your business, you don't want to be charging a huge amount. Over time, your customer base will it will grow as it goes over time and you'll be able to pick and choose what jobs you want to do. And then something else that I suggest you always do is to issue a written quote. 
A written quote is gold when it comes to getting paid, especially if you're VAT registered, because a customer, maybe they didn't see that 20% that's added to the final invoice. And on that written quote, you want to go into specific detail about what you're going to do. If it's to fit maybe a couple of sockets in a living room, then make sure that that customer knows and understands that the way you're going to do it. And when you say to a customer, you're going to wire it in like maybe mini trunking, or you're going to chase out the wall to a certain depth to cover the cables with capping or in conduit. And it's, it might be over the top for the jargon for the customer. They don't need to know that, but then at least they know for when it comes to paying, because it will save an argument later on when they say to you, well, who fills in the chases? And that white trunking stuff here looks ugly. You wouldn't believe how many people think you can just put a socket on the wall with no wires to it and then, hey, presto, and make it work. It, it doesn't happen like that. You need to get the wiring from somewhere. You need to power it. You need to do it safely. So that a lot of customers don't understand that. I always explain it like taking a TV camp into a middle of a field. You can take the plug with you, but you still need to power it from somewhere. So make sure they know like maybe the mess you're going to make as well, because sometimes they say, oh, th this is messy. Well, yeah, you've got to knock the plaster off the wall and you might have to get a decorator in at a later date or sometimes within your quote, you can say, right, I'll fill in the chases, but it's not going to be to a plaster as standard. You're going to have to get a paint room decorator or maybe a plasterer come in to make good. And there's another thing that happens when you're an electrician, I'd say is mistakes. Mistakes will happen. It's the nature of the job. When you turn up to a property and you've got to work, in that bedroom where it's jam packed full of stuff, but you need to get the carpet up. So always get maybe the customer to be with you when you move it or make them help you move it. That'd be the best bet. I can't count how many properties I've been to and I've left them with a 10 times tidier place than when I got there. The customer even had to call me once in the evening because I'd put something, I, I tidied it away. I put a box with a load of valuable things in on top of the wardrobe, out of the way, because I didn't want it in harm's way. I didn't want to damage anything inside that box. I didn't want to damage the box, so I put it out of the way on top of the wardrobe where I could get the carpet up. And I'm just glad that a customer phoned me up and asked me where I put it, rather than thinking, because it crossed my mind, thinking they, they might have thought I stole it. If there's valuables in that box, they obviously thought, oh, I might have took it with me. So it's quite nice to know that then they phoned up, they said, look, look Ben, we know you tidied it up. Where did you put this? So if you do it with them, then they'll know exactly where you put things. One of the worst mistakes I ever made was when I installed a new outside light on a garage and it was wired from the inside. So I had to knock all the electricity off because when I test, I unplug everything on that circuit just to make sure that nothing gets damaged because you never know these days if you're testing a new cabling you've put in to make sure it's not damaged, you're going to test it at 500 volts. So I didn't want to damage any circuit boards or anything like that. So I unplugged things, but I left the freezer unplugged. Ah, and I said, it sat there for a couple of days until I got a call and straight away, I insisted that customer went down to the shops and filled that freezer up to the top. And then obviously they'd like to send me the bill, send me how much it costs, fill it for whatever you want in that freezer. Cause I had to hold my hands up. It was my fault. And these little mistakes they do, they make you feel like an idiot, but I can guarantee you that's never happened again. That happened once. And I learned by that mistakes to have think when I finish the job, plug things back in. It it helped me away, taught me a lesson. And that's the way that I've ran my business for the over 20 years, is always make sure that the customer's happy. However small the job is, if your customer is happy with the work you've done, that can lead on to sort of 10 times more customers when they tell the story to their friends or their family. I think it's quite a funny story and no doubt they've told the story and said, well, he was good enough. He held his hands up and he filled the freezer back up. So that would hopefully be good. So yeah, he's a good electrician and I have got plenty of work out of that same customer. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, there are a few things that I did when I first started out my own electrical business that were well, just a complete waste of time. I had a thousand of them A5 leaflets designed and printed and I got the kids to walk around the estates with me and post them through like people's letterboxes. And... I think I got about one job from that a year later. I always remember someone phoned me up saying, oh yeah, we've got this leaflet in our drawer. We've had it there for a year. You posted it. I'm like, oh my God, that's probably the only person that actually read the leaflet. And I think not only was it a waste of time 
doing that thing. I did like two or three days I spent posting them leaflets. But the people who did phone up, they asked me stupid questions. It wasn't the type of customers that I wanted to attract. They're not the type of customers I say that I wanted to work for. Because they'd ask you questions like, how much is six downlights in my kitchen? Well, as you know, as an electrician, there's so many different things you need to check first. Like, is the consumer unit RCD protected? Can you access the ceiling above? Is the ceiling in the kitchen going to come down so you can wire it like that? There's so many things you've got to think of that can affect the cost of the job. You can't just give one price for every property. I can tell you how much these light fittings cost. I can't tell you how much they are to install. And that went for the same on sort of social media. On my Facebook page that I posted up there. I posted about, oh yeah, I'm looking for work as an electrician. If you need all your electrical needs, I can help you out. All the same sort of people commented. And that's not the sort of people that I wanted to maybe do work for. Because then obviously, if it, how much is an outside plug? It'll be... Uh, £20 for the plug and then maybe £50 to install. Oh, it's £20 for the plug, mate. I'll buy my own. You don't really want to work for people like that. It doesn't help you build a business in a way. Ideally, you want people that are actually looking for an electrician, looking for a reputable, qualified electrician where they go out searching themselves. And that's the whole reason you get your business onto Google and they look for you. But as you start out, you can't just like pick customers out the air. You can't just go up to someone and say, hey, I'll do your electric for you because they don't know you. You've got to build a reputation. You've got to build your customer base. So what I'd say to do when you're first starting out is approach builders and kitchen fitters. In my opinion, they're always looking for a good Sparky. I don't know whether they've um, lost out or I think that Sparkies sometimes do their own jobs, but for the bread and butter in a way sort of thing, they do a few kitchens or a few extensions for builders personally. And just like on Google, you can go onto Google and find their email and then send them a presentation sort of thing, a, a, a document to say, look, I can do this work for you. I'm a qualified electrician. This is what I can do. Would you like to employ me to do maybe your kitchen or your extension? And you meet up with them a few times. I went to people's houses, met up with them, had a cup of tea, just to sort of get to know them a little bit and then started working together. And we did have a good working relationship for well, a good, good five or six years. Working for builders and kitchen fitters is obviously a good way as well to get your reputation out there, get you obviously some photos of some work you've done and to get your name out there to other customers. You'll meet the customers and you know, they'll obviously keep your number for when they need an electrician in the future. So my final tip for when you're starting your own electrical business is to be different from the rest. There are plenty of electricians out there trying to build a business, so you need to stand out from the rest. And if you think, what is the one thing everyone says about electricians? They never clean up. Sparkies always leave it to someone else. And I suppose that's true for most of them, especially on site. But in my business, I was a, a bit of a tidy freak. I like being a tidy freak. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. When my daughter tells me that I've got OCD. But it's a good thing to have OCD. You like being clean and tidy. I like things being just so. Especially when you've just finished maybe testing a £1.7 million house and you're about to ask for that final payment. You want to make sure everything's spot on. So I gave myself on that £1.7 million house, I gave myself a day where I just went round and I checked everything was spot on. Everything was level and everything worked exactly how it should. I think we had, oh, we had more than six intermediate switches down hallways and upstairs and bedroom lighting. So it's just to make sure that everything worked exactly how it should do. And then on my way round, I'd take my little Henry Hoover with me. A lot of people say Sparkies don't clear it, but I have had a Henley Hoover since I started Sparking because, well, they're great sort of thing. You can wreck them and they're, they're quite durable, these little Henry Hoovers. I've had a pink one and a red one. I just like to make sure the end of maybe a job, especially a big job like that, that there was nothing that the customer could pick you up on. And the things that I talk about in this podcast will get you started in your electrical business on the right foot. And all you need to do now is jump inside the Toolbox Talk for Electricians group and keep your business growing bigger and better. So until next time, I'll see you again.